Hi everyone. In this video we're going to talk about an IRS program known as an offering compromise. Now, you may have seen these commercials on TV or on the radio offering to help you settle your debt with the IRS for pennies on the dollar. Question is, can you really do that? In, in theory you can, but in actuality it's pretty difficult. Uh, let me explain. The way it works is there are quite a few people that owe the IRS large sums of money. It could be tens of thousands of dollars, it could be hundreds of thousands of dollars, sometimes several million dollars. The point is, it's so much money that they owe the IRS that it's very unlikely that they're ever going to be able to pay that off in their lifetime. And it's also very unlikely that the IRS will ever be able to collect that money. So they came out with this program called an Offering Compromise. And what happens is you can make the IRS an offer to settle the debt that you owe for an agreed upon amount. So let's say, for example, you owe the IRS $100,000. Well, if you don't think you're ever going to be able to pay that, and you could show the IRS that it's doubtful that they're ever going to be able to collect that money with you from you, they may be able to uh, work out a deal with you where they accept a smaller amount of money. Or that is to say, you may be able to work out a deal with them. So what happens is you might offer them $5,000 to settle the $100,000 debt. Now what happens is that the IRS doesn't do this to be nice. They only do it if they're basically backed into a corner. If you could show the IRS that you are so overburdened debt-wise that you can't afford to pay them, and let's say you've got a, a, a rich relative that would come in and pay the offer amount that you make, well, then the IRS will take a look and they'll say, well, gee, this person owes us $100,000 and they're offering us only 5000 well that's not a lot but based on this situation we don't think we're ever going to be able to collect any money from them so uh, $5,000 would be better than nothing I think we ought to accept their offer that's how an offer and compromise works but when you go to do an offer and compromise the first thing you have to do is you have to submit some paperwork you have to file a form 656, in which case you make the, uh, the uh, offer with the IRS. And then you have to fill out a form 433A, in which case you list all of your collection information. You have to tell the IRS how much money you make, you have to tell the IRS how much your expenses are, and you have to tell the IRS what your assets and your liabilities are. They will then use this to analyze your situation to see if they think you're capable of paying more than you offer. If they think that you are, then they're going to turn your offer down. But if after analyzing your situation, they believe that you're unable to pay more than the amount you offer, it is possible to get the offer and compromise accepted. Now this isn't an easy thing to do. Uh, from my experience, to get an offer and compromise has taken anywhere from three months to two years, depending on the client situation and depending on how the IRS interprets what's going on. Uh, sometimes the offer can be turned down and then it has to be appealed. It can go back and forth several times before uh, an agreement is reached. And what happens is when you file for an offer and compromise, often your paperwork is sent out of town. So you have somebody looking at your paperwork who doesn't know anything about you other than what's on the paper. And sometimes you have to appeal it and actually get to sit down with somebody face to face in order to get something done. Unfortunately, it's not as easy dealing with the IRS as it is with, let's say, a credit card company. With a credit card company, if you're a couple of months behind in paying and let's say you owe them $10,000, Sometimes you can call them on the phone. You might say, well, I'll offer you $6,000 to settle the $10,000 debt. And they may say, fine, and you just saved yourself $4,000 with a 15-minute phone call. Well, it's not like that with the government. With the government, you know, it takes 15 minutes 
to take care of in private industry usually takes months or years to take care of with the government. So the three month to two year thing is probably a realistic time frame to get an offer and compromise done. Now what you've got to do if you're serious about making an offer to the IRS is you have to get your income and expenses together and your assets and your liabilities together. And if it looks like you're in a real tough situation, you might be in a good position to make an offer with the IRS. So you've got to get all your information organized. The IRS is going to ask you for a lot of information. They're going to ask you for the last several pay stubs. They're going to want to see the last three months bank statements. They may want to see proof of other expenses that you have. And they're also going to do checks on you. They're going to, if there's stuff that you're hiding from them, chances are they'll find it. They're pretty skilled at that. So you want to make sure that you're truthful and you give them all the proper information when you submit an offer. But if you are, in fact, in a real uh, stressful situation, it is possible to get the offer accepted. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is if you do happen to get an offer and compromise accepted with the IRS, you've got to stay current with your taxes for the next five years. If you uh, fall behind again after an offer is accepted, they can put the debt back on you. So you have to show the IRS that you're really serious about making an offer and you're really serious about getting your life straightened out and not being behind on your taxes anymore. And if you can do that, then this offer and compromise might be for you. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it, and I will see you in my next video.